that attention, that affection, that love. And unfortunately, most people, because of lack of guidance, try to fill it with various things. They try to fill it with women, or with men, or with food. You know, by day I'm an auto mechanic. And just to show you the problems that we're having in America, if anybody owns a car before 1995, look at your cup holder. Any car built before 1995 has a cup holder that can probably hold this cup or this bottle. But you know, like the 7-Eleven Big Gulp? Big Gulp can't fit in a 1995 or earlier uh, cup holder. Cup holders weren't big enough to hold a Big Gulp back then. Today, you go and you buy a brand new Ford Escape or whatever it is, and you have a cup holder big enough. I mean, the cup holder's like, yeah, I need my that. You can, you can get like two 7-Eleven Big Gulps and put them in your bum, bum, right next to each other. We've made our cup holders bigger. Why? We're trying to fill the hole inside of us in America. So we try to fill it with 7-Eleven Big Gulp, or with donuts, or with food, or restaurant, or drugs, or this, or that. Everyone is thirsting for these things. You're not unique. You're not alone. Your co-workers, your neighbors, your classmates also, they want greatness in their lives. And if we fall in love with ourselves and become arrogant, then that leaves no room in our hearts for love of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we become arrogant and become struck with takabur, then this test of arrogance, this test that Allah has given us and we fail it, then we can die as kufar, who are not worshipping Allah, but who are indeed worshipping ourselves. May Allah protect us and save us from that, inshallah. Salawat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to free us from arrogance which blinds us to the source of greatness. Prayers and tests help us to purify ourselves from this takabur. Tests cleanse us of arrogance. And we can never be free of these tests. One thing that we notice then, number one thing that we should keep note of as we move along quickly, inshallah, Number one reason that why Allah tests us, the number one philosophy of why Allah tests us, why are you testing me? Day in and day out. How come? Why? To make sure and to remove that abhor, arrogance from our hearts. To remind us who is the source of greatness. Look at our own lives. When we're happy and our pocket is full, right? Prayer mat stays by itself a little bit, isn't it? When things are going good in our life, Quran stays on the shelf and gathers some dust, isn't it? But let some hardship come, let some test come, let, let some difficulty come. Now we return to our prayer mat. We reach to the shelf and pull down our Quran. This is who the human being is, it's nothing strange. Every human being does this. When we run into trouble, when we run into tests, then we seek the help of Allah. And this is exactly what Allah wants. Tests make us return to our prayer mat. Tests remove arrogance from our hearts and cause us to seek the guidance, the mercy, the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so one of the reasons for tests is to remove arrogance from our hearts so that we can return to our prayer mats Return to our Qur'an, return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only real true source of greatness. So this is number one. Allah tests us to remove arrogance from our hearts, inshallah. Send us salawat. Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam, in one of these short sayings in the back of Nahj al-Balagha, he says, tests expose a man's potential. That is the 
that capacity that each and every one of us have in potential tests expose that and so make a note of it in your minds this is the second big reason why Allah tests us in addition to removing takabur arrogance from our hearts Allah tests us also why what did we just say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tests us also to increase our capacity and so to finish up for this evening we have to have a discussion about capacity because even though it's number two in the list that we're making it's no less important than number one send us a capacity is something very important to understand each and every one of us have a available capacity right now I like to give the example so we don't leave sisters out ladies we generally look at them as less powerful less strong than men that men can pick up heavier things and do more physical labor more than ladies now is there any man in the audience here that can pick up a car huh nobody can pick up a car right but you go and you check it out online or you look on Ripley's believe it or not you'll see that one lady's baby fell under the car. The car fell on top of the baby and was crushing the baby. Mama reaches out, grabs the bumper of the car, and lifts the car off of the baby. In her available capacity, her istiadade bin fil, her available current capacity, she would never be able to lift that car. It's outside of her capacity. But her hidden capacity, that is the edad bil that potential that she has hidden inside of her, when her baby gets in danger, she will pick up even the end of a car off of the baby. And brothers who are married, they know this. They know better than to mess with women. Anybody that's been married for any length of time, they know the potential that women have within them. And they don't make trouble with women. They understand that. Women have a great deal of potential hidden inside of them. Men also. We're only using them as an example. Each and every one of us here have an available capacity. A capacity that's here for us right now. I can lift up, I don't know, 50 pounds very easily. Now, if I develop that available capacity, what happens is that I get the potential, I have the potential of lifting up 100 pounds. These two types of potential are very important to discuss when we talk about capacity, when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing us. Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, Allah tests us to reveal our capacity. Now then, to reveal the capacity to who? To Allah? Allah is testing us so that He can reveal our capacity to Himself. No. He knows what our capacity is. He knows what our available capacity is. He knows what our potential capacity is. This test is for us so that we can become aware of our own potential. A lot of times when we're tested, and you'll hear people say this over and over again, I can't take it anymore. The test is too much for me. Oh, I wish I was dead. This is a ridiculous and a senseless reaction to test. Tests always seem that they are more than you can bear. Any test that you've ever run into in life, I'm sure we've all had that feeling before, I can't bear this test. This test is too much for me. This test is too heavy for me. I cannot do it, I can't accomplish it, I can't make it, and we hear it every day. There's a test coming up in school, I'm not going to pass it, I'm going to fail it, I don't have the capacity. There's a test with my wife, there's a test with my husband, a test at my job, oh, I just don't know what I'm going to do. And people give up, they say, oh, I'll never make it, the test is too much for me. Why, Leila? The fact of the matter is that Allah always tests us slightly above 
our available capacity. Always tests us slightly above our available capacity. That is the bil fail that we have, that available potential and capacity that is present with us, he always tests us above that level. So really, at the time that we're in the test and we say, I don't have the capacity to deal with this test. Really, you don't. Right now. You don't have that capacity to deal with that test at the moment. But tests reveal potential capacity. And that's why Allah always tests us slightly above and beyond our available capacity so as to expose to us our potential. And this is one of the principles of testing that we have to understand that in addition to testing removing arrogance from the heart, testing, alhamdulillah, also increases one's capacity. Really, Islam is all about capacity. Don't take a simplistic view of Islam. This is probably one of the biggest causes for us losing our children. Why they leave Islam? Because when we teach them about Islam, we teach them some baby deen. A religion that resembles Christianity or resembles Judaism, but doesn't resemble Islam. This religion of ours is all about capacity and is not about heaven or hell. A lot of us think that Allah cares more about heaven and hell. No, he doesn't. Allah cares about growth, progress, development, capacity. This is what Allah cares about. We have a hadith of Qudsi where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, O Bani Adam, if you did not commit mistakes and then seek repentance for that mistake, then I would destroy you and create a creation who would do this. <coughs> Allah is interested in capacity. Allah is interested in growth. Most of the haram and halal that you see in Islam is designed to preserve capacity or to increase capacity. So for instance, you look for instance that in Islam it's haram to eat pork. Why? Is there anything wrong with the meat of the pig physically? No. No, once you cook it correctly, there's no danger for you to get the trichinosis worm that can infect someone. Physically speaking, that meat, you cook it right, you eat it, but spiritually, it has effects. One of the effects that we know from the wayat of eating pork is that pork, eating of pork, removes shame from the human being. Haya. So when you look around the society and you see people dressing a certain way or acting a certain way, it's because the food that they eat is removing their shame from them. Pork has an effect, an effect on the soul. And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and says, don't eat pork, it's an attempt by Allah to preserve our capacity. Allah doesn't want to cut down on our fun in life. He doesn't make halal and haram based on what's, how can I make your life difficult? How can Allah make your life a living hell? No, Allah wants to preserve or increase capacity. I'll show you an excellent example of that. Send us a comment. Now we're talking to the young men, because we're living in the West. We're living in America where we run into a lot of problems. One of the things that's very difficult for young men is to put down the eyes. Keep the eyes down. And when we say keep the eyes down, I'm not trying to tell you brothers to walk around like this all the time. If you walk around like this all the time, you're gonna bump into something, you're gonna walk into traffic. Some bala is gonna happen. But when we say hold the eyes down, that means avert the eyes from looking at the namaharam. That lady who you're not, related to, by marriage or by blood. Those ladies that are attractive, 
we should cast our glances down and not look at them. Why? Because doing this increases capacity. When someone controls themselves on this level, they actually get more pleasure when they go home to their life. So looking down is one of the things that Allah has enjoined for us to preserve and even increase capacity within ourselves. And the problems that you see many people suffering from, where they're selling all kind of blue pills and special medication for men. Why? Because these people have no self-control. And so by doing many of the things that they're doing, we can have some discussion about that on Saturday. I think that the brothers are planning a, a youth gathering on Saturday. We can have this discussion more fully on Saturday. But when you indulge in some of these sins, in some of these behaviors, the looking, the lusting, what it does is decrease capacity. Capacity is cut. Esteadad is re reduced. And so now people have to take medicine or do special exercise or get special equipment. Because capacity have been reduced. Many of the ordinances in Islam are based on this understanding that we are to increase capacity and save capacity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most of his haram and halal are based on this principle that Allah wants to preserve our capacity or increase that capacity. Now then, when we talk about capacity, we have to understand there is a relationship that exists between commands of Allah and tests of Allah. Every command of Allah is a test. So Avan is a test. When someone stands up and calls Avan, now it's the test for those who heard it to come and attend the Salat. Every command of Allah is a test. When Allah says, make Salat, this is a test. Will you leave off doing what you're doing to go and make Salat? Fasting in Shahr Ramadan, it's a test. Every command of Allah is a test. Now, Quran says, La yukhyallifu nafsan illa bi Allah does not give taklif, religious duty, to a person except as much as they're capable of. Allah does not test someone command someone outside of their capacity. I'll give you an example. Infaq, nafaqa, supporting one's family. If someone has the means by which, the money by which to do infaq, then he has to do that. He has to do that. He's got the money for that, he's got to do it. But if he doesn't have the money, then this command is taken away from him. You don't have to do it's like Hajj. Hajj is wajib. Everybody, once they reach a certain nisab, a certain level of wealth, of lifestyle, then Hajj is wajib. If you never reach that level, then Hajj is not wajib on you. Allah never commands anyone, gives any religious duty to anyone that is outside of their capacity. When he gives duty to them, when he gives a command to them, it's within their capacity to carry out that command. And the same is true with test. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests a person, he never tests a person beyond their capacity. So what does this mean? Take note of this. Because it's our test, means we can do it. Any test that we're faced with, any test that we encounter in life, any test that we bump into in our individual life, in our family life, in our community life, because it's our test, that means we can pass it because Allah never tests anyone above their capacity, beyond their capacity. When he tests someone, he tests someone to expose their hidden capacity to them. And so any test that's given to us from Allah, we can pass it. It's not impossible. It is our test. And simply because it's our test means that we can 
رأسك سلامات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Now one thing is this, we have no idea of our own capacity. We have absolutely no understanding of what we are capable of. I like to give this example whenever we have this discussion. The young men in the audience will understand the example, inshallah. Maybe some of the more shalook ladies, the ladies who were really like tomboys, they'll understand the example also. You remember when you were a kid and the wind first got knocked out of you? I know I was climbing a tree. I must have been about eight or nine years old. And I fell out of the tree and landed on the ground on my back. And, <laughs> and for that first two or two seconds, three seconds, you can't breathe. You just <laughs> The first time it happens, you're convinced that you're going to die. This is it. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajimun. I'm dying. Because this never happened before. So the wind gets knocked out and you're sitting there. <gasps> and you can't breathe. And then in a few seconds, your breath comes back to you and you say, <gasps> This is the first time. The second time that happens, you're not so scared. The second time that happens, when the wind gets knocked out of you, you know, Hey, my wind is going to come back in just a second. I'll be okay. We have that experience with our bodies. Enough experience with our bodies that young men can now look at the roof and say, oh, I can jump from up there to down there easy. Why? Because they have that experience. They've done it before. They're confident in their abilities. I've done this before. I can make this happen. It's easy for me to do that. We have this experience with our physical bodies. However, none of us have a full understanding of our entire capacity. It's hidden from us. And the only means by which it's ever made known to us is through tests. Tests reveal our own capacity to ourselves. And we would never ever be able to guess at our capacity if it were not for those tests. We have absolutely no understanding This little example that we gave of falling out of a tree or getting hit in the chest with a two by four, however it happened to you. You get the wind knocked out of you, you have this much physical experience with your own physical body. How much experience do we have with our spiritual selves? How much experience do we have with our own capacities, our own hidden possibilities that exist within us? None. And at the very least, very little. We have no understanding of our capacity. And the only thing that reveals our capacity to us is the tests of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So very quickly, just to remind you, don't forget this. Number one, Allah tests us to remove the kabur and arrogance from our hearts. Number two, Allah tests us to bring our esteedad bil fail, our current capacity, in line with our esteedad bil qubba, our potential capacity. This is why Allah tests us to expose our capacity to ourselves and to bring this available capacity in line with our potential capacity. People will come and say, I want to enjoy my life. I want to enjoy my life. I want to have an easy life. I want to have enjoyment in my life. Tests, when we look at tests, we look at them as something bad. And most people, when we discuss the tests of Allah, even Muslims, even Shias of Ahl Bayt, when we discuss tests, then people say, oh no, test is bad. And people are trying to avoid tests, isn't it? If you tell someone, brother, Allah is going to test you with X, Y, Z, then you'll find that brother try to avoid that thing. He wants to get away from that. He wants to avoid that test. He wants to, hey, do it. Beside. Turn away from it and get away from the test. Because we've been programmed some way, somehow, to think that life should be easy, 
that life should be feet up iced tea all the time, when in reality, tests are good for us. And instead of trying to run away from tests, we should be looking at tests as opportunities. And this is one thing we see that differentiates Ahle Bayt from ourselves. This is what makes them different and better than us. Because they never run away from tests. And any test that comes their way, they take a pleasure in it. You look at Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wa No one did more good for Ibn Muljam than Ali. The killer of Ali was helped more by Ali than by anyone else. Ibn Muljam goes to Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali Abi Talib, to make bay'ah. This is in the beginning of the Khilafat of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ibn Muljam goes there, and Ali holds his hand and won't let him leave. He says, do you really make bay'ah to me? Do you swear that you will not make, break this allegiance? Ibn Muljam says, no, hold on, I'll never break this allegiance. Imam Ali finishes this meeting with Ibn Muljam by saying, I want his friendship, but he wants my death. Once Ibn Muljam comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen and asks for money and for a horse, Imam Ali says to his uh, servant, he says, give him the money, give him the horse. On the morning that Imam Ali والسلام, was martyred in Masjid al-Kufa, Ali comes in and does another favor for Ibn Muljam. Wakes him up, tells him, get up, it's time for Salat. Don't sleep on your stomach. This is the sleeping of shaitan. No one helped Ibn Muljam more than Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali Nabita. And yet, did Ali say to himself, no, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to do anything for you. You're going to try to kill me. I know who you are. You're plotting against me. No. Ali accepts the test, welcomes the test. This is one thing that makes Ahle Bayt different from us. They go looking for tests to engage themselves in. And we try to avoid tests as to get away from that. I mean, we've all heard the story. Hazrat Zahra Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, their children get sick, they make dua to Allah, Ya Allah, give us shifa'at. If you give us shifa'at, health for our children, we will fast for three days for you. And what happens? On the first day of fasting, someone comes and knocks on the door at the futur, and they, Ribayat says, first, Ali gives up his food. Ali doesn't want his wife to give up her food, or his children to give up their food. Ali gives up his food. The rest of Ahl al-Bayt, though, seeing the action of Ali, they want this test also. They want this opportunity also. So they also give up their food. They do the same on the second night and on the third night. You see this with Ahl al-Bayt constantly putting themselves in the place of test in the service of Allah and accepting test as a part of life and a portion of life that is not something bad or something strange, but something that is an opportunity for us to grow and to develop, inshallah. Salamat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I want to give a few more examples so that you can understand what we're talking about when we talk about capacity because our future discussions will rely on this. Take, for example, sleep. Someone who sleeps all day doesn't enjoy sleep. The person who goes to work for 8, 10, 12, 14 hours a day, when he lays down and closes his eyes to go to sleep, that sleep is the best sleep for him. He enjoys that sleep. Person who works in the day and sleeps by night, oh, he enjoys that sleep. The person who sleeps all day, he doesn't enjoy that sleep. Because it's 
become something normal, something ordinary to him. The taste, the enjoyment in this life actually is to be found in test. Young brothers, young sisters, tonight when you go home, ask your fathers and your mothers.